few rolling stones in your life this morning. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, there's a lot of times we place those stones in front of our own lives. We dig holes like the song was saying, but praise God, he still calls our name and he still draws us out and rolls the stone away. Amen. I thank God this morning that I'm serving a living God, not a dead Amen. God. I'm thankful this morning I serve a God, hallelujah, that we can move heaven and earth yes, and meet your need. Amen. We don't serve in idols. We don't serve a wood or stone, but we serve the living God. Amen of creation. And I thank the Lord for that this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. If you got your Bible, turn with me to the book of Second on oh, First Timothy, excuse me, chapter number two. First Timothy chapter number two. I done something I don't usually do. I brought my phone in this morning, but I've got a few quotes on here that I want to read to you in this little while. If I can find the place. Amen. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. This is, uh, we are celebrating Independence Day. Yeah, would you stand with us all over the house for the reading of God's Word? First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy 2, chapter number, I mean, chapter number 2, verse number 1. You find the place, you say amen. amen. All right. This is what the Bible said, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. He says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, amen? amen, there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who yes. gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Let me skip down to verse number 8. It said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Amen. I want to know my name, a room full of believers this morning that can lift up holy hands and without wrath not being made to do it, but because you want to do it, that can lift up holy hands and say, I know that when I'm reaching up, I'm not reaching up in the air. I'm not beating up the air as the Apostle Paul said, but I'm reaching up to take hold of the God of heaven, amen, amen that will meet my needs, hallelujah. Yes. He'll meet my family's needs. He'll meet my nation's needs. Yes. He'll meet yes. my church's needs. Yes. Glory to God, he'll meet my neighbor's needs yes. if they'll call on him. Amen. I thank God for the word this morning. Would you pray this morning before we go any further? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for that you're still rolling stones. And I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I thank you for the spirit of God that we feel this morning, Lord. I pray that you would anoint us and hide us behind the cross and let nothing but Jesus shine. Anoint the ears of the hearers to hear what the spirit is saying this morning, God. I promise to give you all the praise all the glory and all the honor for you alone are do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. amen. Now, I do know that we are celebrating Independence Day this week. I just want to speak to you from the heart. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's give him one more praise. Can we do that? Give the Lord one more hand of praise. Amen. I just want to speak to you from the heart this morning because... Uh, glory to God. We we come up last night. I'm gonna move this before it gets knocked down somewhere. I'll figure it will a little bit. We come up last night, and we, uh, as Brother Mike said earlier, uh, we had a firework. We had parade and food, and we just had an awesome time. And around the Fourth of July, that's generally what we do as a nation or as a people. We get together with family. We shoot fireworks and we eat. And some people just like to stay at home and rest and just thank God that they're able to, to have a bed to lay down in and, and get some rest. Praise God. I know I, I like a little bit of both of it. Amen. But uh, we just have a good time. Why? Because we still live in the greatest country on the face of the earth. Yeah. I believe, I thank God today that I was able to wake up in the U.S. of A. Amen? Yeah. I'm thankful today that I was 
born an American, but I'm, hallelujah, I was born a second time as a citizen of heaven. Amen. America, I know we're in distress right now. I know we're in civil unrest right now, but I choose not to focus on the negative, but I choose to focus on what God's going to do with the outcome. Because whether we're going on, our nation is going away from God right now. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Church, we serve a God that is able to turn this nation back around. He is able to put this nation on her knees. I'm telling you, if we, the church, the people of God, you are the called, the chosen, you are the children of the Most High God, if we would hit our knees and begin to intercess and pray for all of our nation, for our people, for our world, I want you to know that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Do you remember, oh glory to God, I thank you Lord for giving me that right there. Amen. Do you remember the first time you called on the Lord to be saved? Yes. Think about this with me. I want you to go back to that day. Go back to that day. I remember it plainly for me, and I know y'all probably, y'all can tell my story of salvation better than I could probably as much as y'all hear it, but I'm thankful for that day. Amen. I was a, 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 a rotten, dirty sinner, no good for nothing. But you know what? God saw through all of that. He saw through the black heart. And he said, I'm going to give him a heart of flesh. And he, he, he helped me. He drew me to that altar, Brother Mike. Then when I went down, I didn't have a fancy prayer, praise God. I didn't say, oh, Father, in heaven. I didn't say, Lord, I'm in need of a Savior. My life is messed up. And I need you to save me. And you know what happened? God heard that prayer. And he turned my life around. I want you to know I've never been the same. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory. Listen, prayer changes things. It don't matter if you pray a King James prayer or a New Living Translation or if you just speak to God from the heart. That's what he prefers. That you just speak to him from the heart. And as I was reading this morning in the on the front porch, sitting outside drinking my coffee, or well, not my coffee, my sweet tea. Amen. <laughs> I was reading right here, and the Bible said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplication and prayers and intercessions and giving of things be made for all men. And I want to read this to you real fast before I get into the sermon part. Hallelujah. America is a beautiful place. Amen? Amen. America is a great place. Amen. America is a uh, just the land of the free, the home of the brave. Uh, listen, I still have pride in our country. Yes, I, I still have pride in our country. People look at patriotism today and they say, you know what, they, that, you're a nationalist. And they try to defame it and degrade it. But I don't care what you call me. I'm standing up for what I know is right. I'm standing up for the men and women who died so that we may be free. I thank God that we live in a country, oh glory to God, where we're still able to not go and hide underground, but we're able to come into the house of the Lord wherever you see fit. And I don't care if you're Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, or whatever you are, as long as you worship in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, risen again, hallelujah, it don't matter. You have the freedom of religion to come and worship where you choose. Other countries, they're not, they don't have what we have. They have to hide. They have to go underground. They can't speak the name of Jesus lest they be murdered or killed for the cause of Christ. We have it over here in America, in the Western society. We have the mindset that this is like this everywhere, but church, it's not. It's not like this. You go over to the Middle East, and I assure you, you can't even say the name Jesus. There's places where the Bible is not allowed. And I've always said, and I'll stand firm on it, why are they so afraid of the Bible? Because this word right here has the power to turn nations around. This word right here has the power to take the devil and put him on the run. The devil begins to tremble when the word of God begins to get spoke for. The enemy begins to run when you begin to take God's word and 
and use it like God meant for you to use it. You have authority with the Word of God. And these dictators and people in other countries, listen, they know that the Bible, the Word of God is real. Why don't they say the Quran ain't welcome there? Why don't they say the this book or that book ain't? No, they're targeting the Bible. Why? Because there's power in the Word of God. Wonder working power in the Word of God. They're not afraid of dead religion, but they are afraid of a living one. Amen. The living God. Jesus, who is the Word of God. And I'm thankful we still live in America. And it's Independence Day coming up this week. And I told you I wanted to read this to you. This is what somebody wrote about only in America. And then we'll get back to the sermon. They said, America is a crazy place. Here's what they wrote, only in America. Only in America can pizza get to your house faster than an ambulance. Now, if you're an EMT here, I'm sorry. I didn't write this. I'm just reading it to you. Only in America can a pizza get to your house faster than an ambulance. Next one. Only in America are there handicapped parking places in front of a skating rink. All right. <laughs> Only in America do drug stores make the sick walk all the way to the back to get their prescriptions filled while the healthy can buy their suntan lotion up front. <laughs> Only in America do people order double cheeseburgers and large fries with a Diet Coke to drink with it. <laughs> Only in America do we leave cars worth thousands of dollars in the driveway and our garages is filled with junk. Only in America do we use answer machines to screen calls and we have call waiting so we won't miss a call from somebody we don't want to talk to in the first place. <laughs> Only in America do we buy hot dogs in packages of 10 and we buy buns in packages of 8. <laughs> and last, last but not least, <laughs> only in America do we have Braille on drive-up ATM machines. Now Braille is the, the little dots that blind people have. They don't need to be driving. <laughs> But I still believe, amen, even though we have a crazy America, I still believe we have a good America. Amen. Well, I still believe America is the greatest nation in the world. Amen. I thank God that he has raised us up and has chosen us to live and be American by birth and, and Christian by birth again, our second birth. But the Apostle Paul tells us a few things here, uh, if we'll take it to heart. Let me put this down now. He, he tells us a few things here that we can do for our country and that we can do for our nation. And he said, I exhort you. Exhort means the Apostle Paul is telling us that he, he urges us that we should do this. This is something that we all need to do. I urge you, exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplication and prayers and intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. I want you to know that we're living in a land today that is being divided by the mainstream media. It's being divided by the liberal left and the, the mindset that the agenda that our world has today. Brother Lester, listen, I thank God that we're still able to come in and worship together. I don't care what skin color you have. Amen. God don't care what skin color you have. He ain't white or black or he ain't Jew or Greek. He is one God. Amen. And the Bible said there is no black or white free or slave you are Greek in God I want you to know hallelujah that we're all citizens of heaven yes. if we're called if we call on the Lord and ask him to save us and it ain't going to be just a white heaven a black heaven it's going to be a heaven glory to God yes. made up of all different kinds of people right. if you don't like that now honey you might as well get over it because you don't want to go there amen yes. there's going to be people there that you didn't think was going to be there there's going to be some that didn't make it that you thought was going to be there. But I want you to know glory to God. Hallelujah. God said we are to pray for all men. Yes, we are to pray for 
our leaders, we're to pray for our brothers and sisters. When you call on the Lord in the morning time, instead of just saying, Lord, how can you bless me today? Or how can I do for you today? You start praying for your neighbors. You start praying for your church family. You start praying for your lost family. You start praying for everybody that you can think of. Just say, Lord, if they don't know you, don't let them go to sleep tonight until you convict them of their sin. Church, I want you to know, Romans 13 says, Now it is high time that we awake out of our sleep and awake out of our slumber because we are closer now than when we first believed. I want you to know time's running out. I told you Wednesday night in Bible study that this world, the spirit of Babylon is flowing through this world and our world is crazy. The Bible even said it would be that way. It said they would be as the nations would be drunk. Turn your news on. <laughs> you know what? It, it looks like people is drunk. They're crazy. The, that's the spirit of the enemy that is flowing through our land right now. I told you that the enemy is getting ready, people ready for the Antichrist. But glory to God, the Holy Spirit is getting us ready for the real one. Amen. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. And I want you to know it's time to wake up and get as many people to come with us as we can. Jesus told them, don't just say there's four months until the harvest. He said, but look into the fields. Oh, glory. Look to the fields. They are already white for the harvest. That means, don't just say we got time. We got four more months before the Lord comes back. We got this much, this much time. And Oh, I hear people all the time. The Lord's been saying he's coming back for thousands of years. We got all the time in the world. That's a lie from the devil. Be ready at all times. We're closer now than when we first believed. People get ready. Jesus is coming. Hey, glory to God. The song says, soon we'll be going home. Hallelujah. I can't wait to hear that sound, Sister Linda, and see my Lord step out on the cloud. Oh, glory. I can't hear to wait to hear the angel give the shout. You know. Woo, glory. And see God's children begin to take hold and lose gravity. Oh, and begin to catch hair. And we're going up to meet our Lord Jesus in the air. Oh, praise the Lord. And so shall we ever be with him. Hallelujah. Goodbye, world. Hello, Jesus. All the evil that you're going through now is nothing compared to the joy that you're going to have over there. Let this stuff roll off your back. Pray about it. Pray is what changes things. The Bible says don't render evil for evil. That's what we're seeing right now. What those cops are doing, Brother Lester, uh, some of them, not all of them, cops. Listen, we shouldn't judge all cops by what one cop does. Right. We shouldn't judge all uh, whites or blacks by what one of them does. Right. But what we're seeing in our streets is, is that's what's happening. Yeah. And we're seeing evil. The Bible said we're not to go out in rioting and drunkenness. We're not to repay evil for evil, but to return or render evil with good. What's the best thing we can do for somebody? Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. And God's word says right here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, I exhort you therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. I tell you all the time and I can't tell you enough, I'm thankful for every one of you. I'm thankful that God placed us together. I'm thankful, hallelujah, that I could know I could call on you any time, day or night. And I hope you know the same thing about us, that we will be here for you. Amen. And I know you're there for us. I thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for your brothers and sisters. Listen, a lot of people say we don't need to give people the glory. We're not giving people glory. I'm giving God glory for what he's done in your life. Amen. Amen. I'm giving God glory for what he's done in my life. Because, Santa, you know good and well, back used to, if somebody would call me needing something, I said, I ain't got time for that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't have time for all of that. I'm trying to build my life up. But I want you to know right now, in the name of Jesus, what he's done in our lives, if i got something going on, honey, I'll lay it down and come help you, whatever you need. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to know God has done something in our lives. Yes. Amen. Woo. It's called a new nature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, in Christ, he is 
is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to know you got rid of that old suit of man that you used to be and you put on the new suit who God has made you now. You have a new nature. The old things is not who you are now. You are not defined by your past, but you are defined by the Jesus. Hallelujah. That saved you and is working in you. You are defined by the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you now. So thank God. Thank God for you are not who you used to be. Thank God for your brothers and sisters that God has done a work in them. They're not who they used to be. Now, truth be told, me and my wife used to, before we got saved, I'll just be honest with you, y'all already know, we couldn't even stand to be around one another. Truth the truth. Before we met Jesus, could we? I couldn't stand her, she couldn't stand me, but we wouldn't either one of us leaving because we said, hey, them boys, I'm getting the kids. Nope. She said, I'm getting the kids. I said, you ain't going nowhere. And so we stayed. We might have slept in different rooms, but let me tell you, what cure is that? When you go to the altar and you begin to call out on the living God of heaven, I want you to know there's power in prayer. There's power in the God that hears your prayer. He said, my ear is not deaf that it cannot hear. And my arm is not short that it cannot say. Yeah. Woo. I said like Billy Ray Cyrus right there, didn't you? <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, there's power in the God that you're praying to. Jehovah. Amen. Amen. The God of heaven. So he said, I urge you therefore to exhort. I exhort you therefore that first of all, supplication. Talk to God in prayers and intercessions. And you know what intercession is? It's standing in there and it's praying for somebody. Intercessory prayer. That's what Jesus does for you and I. Yes. He told Peter, the apostle Peter, and this is how the Lord showed me this, and I'm going to get right back on that. I was passing through scripture this morning, just reading, and I told my wife, I said, wow, the Lord just showed me something. Just, I just wasn't even reading the Bible. I was flipping the pages of my Bible, and something, Sister Linda, caught my eye, and I'm like, Lord, how do you do that? How, how does the Lord do this stuff? I was just flipping pages in the Bible. I was looking for a verse, and on the, the overhead of my Bible, it said the... Uh, Oh, the, that holy week when Christ rode in at the beginning, when he rode in on the donkey. And you know, everybody was out there shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he. Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And those same people that was there that was shouting Hosanna and lifting up Jesus and bowing down for Jesus and worshiping Jesus the same week. The same week, seven days later, glory to God, they was the ones that was shouting, give us that murderer and crucify Jesus, kill Jesus, get rid of him, we don't want him, he's not what we thought he should be. And as I seen the title, all that I'm just telling you that is what's in the story, but I just seen the title and the Lord spoke something in my heart right then. And he said, our founding fathers, he founded this nation, they founded this nation upon God. Yes, I, I can read you so, so many statements from different ones when Benjamin Franklin stood up in front of 56 men that was signing the Declaration of Independence and he looked at all of them if he, and he said, if a petal of a flower falls to the ground without getting God's attention, how much more so will God not see the distress of this nation? And he told them, we need to begin to make sure that we seek the face of God in this matter. And 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776, you know what they done? They hit their knees and they began to pray to Almighty God, glory to God. Why are we still a great nation because it's founded upon men and women who believed in Jesus Christ, who took a stand for him, who stood and they prayed to God. Amen. We're still standing on their shoulders because we, the modern day America, has turned so far to the left that we, listen, it's hard. It's hard to see our nation that we're living in now. I'm just going to be honest with you. I love America. America is great. But our nation has turned so far from God. We're not where we're supposed to be. And how do we get 
our nation back to the way it's supposed to go, number one, you pray for. Amen. You pray for. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I'll hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If we want to see our nation healed, we need to begin to pray. We need to begin to pray. Think about it. What would it be like if our leaders today, if our Supreme Court and our executive and legislative and judicial branches, what would it be like today if every one of them before the meeting, they said, we need to seek the face of God on this matter. And they say, Lord, what would you have us to do in this nation? Think about what our nation would be today. Psalms 33 and verse number 12. The Bible said, Blessed is the nation whose trust or whose God is the Lord. Amen. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's Psalms 33 and 12. I want you to know God Almighty, He has His hand upon our nation because He still has a remnant of people that is praying for. God has a people. Yes. Listen, you know what? We used to be the majority, but the longer we sit back and stay quiet and complacent, it's easy for us to look out in our world and see how our world is so evil. It's easy for us to sit at home and shake our heads, but still sit back and be quiet about it. It's easy for us to come to church and hear a sermon about it and shout amen, but yet we sit quiet in serving the Lord. Listen, it's time for the church of God to rise up. It's time for the church of God to begin to pray. Oh, and I say rise up. And when I say rise up, I actually mean hit your knees. Because you're not going to rise until you fall down on your knees. Did you know that the devil trembles when the weakest Christian hits their knees? The devil trembles when the weakest Christian hits their knees. I want you to know he can't stand People talking to God because he knows that their father is listening. Amen. And so the enemy has tried to keep you quiet for this long. And today's complacency, I know I sound like a broken record up here, but today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. If we don't do something, we're going to be captive in our own land that our founding fathers made and set up for to worship Almighty God. Oh, you love coming to church. You better fall down on your knees and pray Amen. that we get to keep coming. Amen. You've seen how quick they close the doors when Amen. one little virus comes through. And I'm not denouncing the virus, but I'm saying it ain't nothing to murder my God. Amen. 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 My God's able to keep you. Amen. Amen. I do know a lot of people are sick from it. I'm not giving that, taking that away. But I pray that our faith be made stronger than our fear. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and give my things be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The Bible said we're not only just to pray for the people of our nation and for the people that, of our land, but we're to pray for our leaders as well. I'm talking about whether you agree with them or not, we've got to pray for them. <clears throat> We got to pray for them. Amen. They're in charge right now. And if you'll read your Bible in the book of Romans chapter 13, the Bible said every leader, every authority, higher authority is put in place by God. Amen. They're put there by God. And it said whether they're good or whether they're evil, God used evil Nebuchadnezzar. He used him in mighty ways, by, I might say, if you read the book of Daniel. God can take somebody who means evil and he can use it for his glory. Amen. And so the Bible said whether we like them or not, we are to pray for them. Amen. And I used to say, you might want to pray that their days be few and, and, and somebody rise up to replace them. But listen, God knows what he's doing. Amen. And we definitely, if there's ever been a time in our nation, we need to pray for our leaders. That is the day. Pray that 90% of them get saved and, and mind their own business. Amen. <laughs> My goodness, I've never seen a time where people point fingers. And, and listen, I've always heard, I've told you I'm speaking from the heart this morning. My daddy always says something before you point a finger. I always remember there's three pointing back at you. They are. They are. And I find it funny that every time they try, and I'm, somebody may disagree with me, I can't hear it. Right now I got the microphone, so <laughs> you just want to listen. <laughs> 
I find it funny how they're throwing things at Trump and how it always ends up backfiring and exposes the evil yes. that's inside of them. Yes. You want to know why? Because God has his hand on the man. Amen. God has Amen. placed the man here for yes. such a time as this. Yes. And whether we like it or not, or whether you agree with it or not, listen, you need to pray for the man. Amen. Pray for our leaders that is in charge, that God would touch them and use them and lead them. We need God leading our people Amen. for them to be able to lead us. Amen. You see, it starts at the head and works its way down. That's why the Bible says judgment must begin at the house of God. Because if God's house ain't right, how do you expect everything else to be right? Amen. If God's people ain't right, how are we going to go out and, and witness to somebody else and draw people? Because people today, they'll look at the church and they'll say, I don't see nothing no different. I don't see nothing no different than the ones I go and see at the club on Friday and Saturday night. Come on. Come on, somebody. We have mixed and mingled so much with the world that people can't tell the difference. Are we church of or are we the church or are we the world? Come on, somebody. We have given place to the enemy, and the Bible said don't give not one inch to it. Amen. We need to stand up for what is pure and what is holy and what is true and what is righteous. And like that song said, Lord, I know you're drawing a line in the sand. We need to draw a line in the sand, not between what is righteous and unrighteous. We ought to know that. You ought to be able to look at somebody and tell they're a Christian or they're not. I'm talking about we need to draw a line in between religion and relationship with God. Listen, I'm tired of being just religious. I want to be relationship with God. That's it when I go out to the world. My father is watching. I don't want to dishearten my father. I don't want to make my father unhappy. I don't want, I want to make him proud. Listen, I promise you with religion you say, well God, he's, he's, he'll forgive me. But with relationship you don't want to let your daddy down. Amen. You don't want to let your daddy down. And I promise you today we need to get out of the religious mindset and get into a relationship with God. <coughs> The Bible said for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. If we would all work together, all men, all men, all women, if we would all work together, our world wouldn't be in the shape that we're in today. Amen. But we would live a quiet and a peaceable life yes. in godliness and in honesty. You know, but we're living in a generation that had rather lie to you than tell you the truth. Yeah. It's a shame, but that starts at home. They need to be taught. we got to teach our children. That way when they raise up, Gen Z comes up or whatever you want to call them. I don't know what they call them. There's so many names nowadays. But I want you to know whoever these young ones that's growing up, we need to teach them what thus saith the Lord. Amen. We need to send them out with the word of God in their heart. Because the Bible said if you'll train up a child in the way they should go when they're old, they will not depart from it. And when the Bible says that, I want you to know this. Sometimes they may turn their back on it. The Bible didn't mean that they wouldn't turn to the stray, but the Bible meant that they would always know the way back. Yes. They would always know the way back. Because, listen, when I grew up, I grew up in church, and I grew up, I'm talking about every, I had a drug problem. Granny drug me to church, and every Sunday, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night. Uh, Y'all heard it before. But, listen, when I got 16, I said, I know better than God. I know better than what that church said, and I went my own way. But you know what? I always knew in my spirit that I could turn back and call yes. on my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Yes. And my father would wrap me up and put a robe on my back and yes. ring on my finger. I'm telling you, he'd write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so I always knew. But I thank God that for praying mamas and praying daddies and praying grandmas yes. and praying grandpas. Yes. Listen, that's why we got to pray for our brothers and sisters. Yes. Because yes. their soul depends on it. Amen. Their soul depends on it. I want my family in heaven. I want my friends in heaven. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. No. So we need to pray. God, save them. Even though they're living in sin, save them, Lord. And he said, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, 
our Savior. You know what God wants us to do? Well, it says it's good in His sight. That means He wants you to do it. He wants us to live good and acceptable lives. Romans chapter 12 says that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God wants us to live good and acceptable lives. He tells us right here how to do it. He tells us right here how to do it. Pray for your fellow man. Pray for even the ones you don't know. Pray for our leaders. Pray for your kings. That will help Brother David Atkins. I thank God for every veteran that fought and died for our nation and that are still fighting and that have come home. Listen, I thank God for every one of them. Yeah. That is a warfare that they are fighting, a physical warfare. I want you to know and we thank God for you. And if it wasn't for men and women that rose up to the point and to the standard and they went and fought for our country, where would we be today? Amen. Probably in the graveyard with the rest of the other nations, Rome and Greece and all the other yes. ones that have rose to power and have died off. We're still a young nation, 244 years old. I believe it is, Saturday, if I can be correctly. I think that's right anyways. It may not be. Anybody know? Okay, well, y'all just believe that, 244. <laughs> 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 I, like I think that's 1776. Anyways, y'all Google it. Just Google it. Oh, man. That's a physical warfare. But we're, it is, Brother Ben. I mean, John, sorry. Brother John. All right, 244. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. 244 years. We're still a young nation. We're still a young nation. But God, amen, is able to keep us going. If we look at China, if we look at Egypt, if we look at Africa and all these other old nations, and they still don't have the freedom that we have here today. Amen. Why? Because we were established on Jesus Christ. I've got so many different ones I can read to you. Quotes from uh, Thomas, oh, not Thomas Jefferson, but uh, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Patrick Henry, Patrick Henry, our founding fathers. Listen, and every one of them said it's for the cause of Jesus Christ. So if people argue with you and say this nation wasn't founded on God, that's the agenda of the world today. They want you to believe that this was not a Christian nation. But if you want to know the truth of it, you look back in history, yes. do research for yourself, and you will find out that this nation was founded upon God and upon Jesus Christ yes. and upon faith in the kingdom of God. And that's why America is still the blessed nation in this world. It's still the richest nation. It's still a, the freest nation. But I want you to know all that can be took away Amen. if we fail to do our part. Amen. If we fail to do our part. Amen. We've got to pray and seek God's face. And he says right here, who will have all men, it's good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. God wants every man to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Listen, there's so much knowledge out here. The Bible said in the book of Daniel that in the last days knowledge would increase. But it didn't say what kind of knowledge. You see, there's the truth, and then there's phony knowledge. Amen. There's what the, the people nowadays want you to believe that will draw you away from Christ and from, from God. They want to draw you to their mindset. But I want you to know the only thing the Word of God says is that you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. I want you to know... Don't buy into the garbage that the mainstream media is selling. You dig in the Word of God. If you want to know the truth and you want to live a free life, you want to continue living free, amen, that's what Independence Day is, our freedom, amen. If you want to continue having that independence, then you dig in the Word of God and you listen to what thus saith the Lord said. I'd much rather listen to what Jesus said than somebody on CNN. Amen. I'd much rather listen because they'd rather lie to you than tell you the truth. Amen. Most 90% of them will. They want to tell you something that's made up or are half right. And they're telling something that's half right is just as wrong as telling a whole lie. Amen. Listen, you can't twist and, and do this and, and make things fit your plan and make things fit your agenda. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. But God's word is truth. Amen. You want to know what's going to happen, what is happening? Read it. It's here for you. Jesus said, I've told you all things. Let me move on. 
He said God would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We need to know the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I like that right there. Because though the world says there's many gods, though the world said there's a lot of gods, I know, I know that I know that I know but there is but one God. There's a bunch of little G gods. There's a lot of dead gods. But there's only one God. The living God. His name is Jehovah. Amen. His name is Elohim. His name is Adonai. Glory to God. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Woo. Glory. He said there is but one God. One mediator between God and men. And he says right there the man Christ Jesus is his name. I've told you before, Christ wasn't Jesus' last name. Christ was a title. Christ meant the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the Messiah. It wasn't Jesus' last name, Christ. No, it was Jesus, the Messiah. The one who was to come. The one that the Old Testament pointed to. And the one that we're looking to. Amen. That is Jesus. Amen. I love that name. There's power in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe me, listen. I remember one time when I was a child, probably about 13, 14 years old. Every time I'd go to town, there was one person. I don't know why we got into it every time I go to town. I know y'all probably couldn't believe that. We'd tie up and fight every time I went to Carbon Hill. I mean, every time. I'd just be riding a bicycle, Brother Rick, and here's come, out of the bushes. And we'd roll around on the ground for a little while. I try to stay out of that neighborhood, and I go back down there one more time, and here we go again. We'd rumble and listen. But there was one time I finally had enough of it. I got tired of fighting. I said, I've got enough of this. And I remember the Lord had just time and he had given me a touch. We'd been in revival down at the church of God prophecy. And the Lord had touched me. I mean, I was on fire for the Lord right then at that point in time. I mean, whoa, I could whoa, put out hell with a water gun. You know what I'm talking about? You're just so excited for the Lord. And, and, and so we'll go to the Carmel football game. And sure enough, there they are over in a group. I said, oh, goodness. Here we go. There's no pipe for sure. I said, Lord, give me something. Help me out here. And without him saying anything, I walked right up over there, and I said, Brother, you need Jesus. And he goes, Never again have I had one problem with that boy. Ever. Ever. Never again. I want you to know, because one thing, the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you might have been out there playing, brother, during that. Amen. There is but one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Do y'all know he died for us, but he didn't stay dead. That's the God we serve. He loved you so much that he chose glory to God. The Father says, Holy Spirit, go down there and wake up our boy. Woo, glory. And he come back from the lower parts of the earth. That body come up out of the grave. He stepped out. He folded that, that cloth up and laid it to the side, symbolizing he wouldn't finish. He's coming back. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. He stepped out of the tomb with the keys of death, hell, and the grave yes. with all power and victory and triumph in his hand. And he said, whosoever will, let them come. Hallelujah. Whosoever will, red, yellow, black, or white, let them come. Oh, glory. Glory. Rich or poor, let them come. Kings and queens, let them come. I don't turn nobody away. Amen. Jesus said, come on, we have one God, one Savior. Amen. One mediator, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That's what we're doing here today. Every time we come to the house of God, we are testifying of him. Whether you open your mouth in the church house or not, you are testifying just by being here. Amen. Whether you know it or not, when you go out, what you live, how you live your life is a testimony as to what God has done for you. Amen. You don't even have to open your mouth. They can see it on your face. Amen. That's why I say I wish Christians wouldn't have the baptized in pickle juice look, but they would <laughs> smile a little bit. Just smile and let people know that you're happy. Yeah. God has saved you. God has pulled you from hell and wrote your name down in that Lamb's Book of Life. He's coming back after His people. He has blessed you. He's kept you. Listen, we need to let folks know.
without even opening our mouth that we're happy. Yes. Amen. 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 Old Doug Downs, he said, happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Almost done. Right here, the Bible said, I will therefore, verse 10, uh -huh. that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. What does that mean right there, Brother Chad? I'm glad you asked. He said, I will therefore, I wish everybody, that men, not just men, but women as well, everyone, remember there's no woman or man in the Bible, it's all. Amen. One race or one people. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. We ought to be so happy that when we get to the house of the Lord, not just here at the house of the Lord, you can lift your hands at home. Amen. You can lift your hands on the job. You can lift your hands going down the road. Now, if you're driving, I prefer that you don't do that. But Brother Bruce told me one day he was on a motorcycle. I said, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord. But I do know one time we seen Brother Bruce going down the road with that leg just a kicking like that. He said, the Lord, I got a hold of him and the Holy Ghost was running through him. He said, I couldn't, I couldn't be still, brother. He said, go to town. <laughs> we ought to be able to lift up our hands yeah. without wrath. That means we're not mad about it. We're thankful to get to lift yeah. up our hands. Yeah. We are thankful and without doubt. I know that when I'm lifting up God, you are raising your hands or lowering your hands right yes. back to pick me up. When Peter began to fall, you know what? Jesus was there and he took out his hand and said, Peter, where'd you doubt? Why'd you doubt? Why? Oh, glory to God. That's what the Lord is doing for us, church. He's lifting, as we're raising our hands, He's lifting us up and saying, why you doubt? Don't doubt. Have faith. I'm here to catch you. I'm here to lift you up. I am the glory and the lifter of your head. God see it. Amen. Would you stand with us all over the house? I guess if we could title this message anything... It will be keep America great. Amen. Keep America great. I got a flag. We all seen it last night on that four wheeler. That's what it says. Keep America great. Amen. And I want you to know. I told y'all that was the physical, the warfare that our veterans have went. But there's something else that's just as mighty, and maybe even more powerful. I know. Well, I know it's more powerful. That's the spiritual warfare. Yes. Prayers. Because if those men and women went out into the war and they didn't have somebody at home praying for them, I know that they they got the mindset and the wisdom. And Brother Dave, I know y'all trained. And I know y'all done everything to, to learn. But if somebody hadn't been praying the protection of the Lord over you, you know what? Who's to say? Because the Bible said we don't get through with our might or with the hand of flesh, but by his spirit, yes. says the Lord. Yes. Amen. So there's a spiritual warfare. Not only is there physical warfare, there's a spiritual warfare. Number one is prayer. Number two, what did the Bible say right here? Number one was prayer. Number two is to live the life. Be the testimony. And that's good in the simple sight of God. Number three is to witness. Amen. Witness to everybody that you come across. You have that right. To tell, what well, just like Brother Rick Atkins said this morning, you have the ability to impact someone's life every time you meet somebody. Amen. Be a witness to them. Amen. Brother Lester? I just want to say something to the church. Uh, we've been dealing with this Black Lives Matter and all this, but I was looking at this right here. Uh, 